Visualizing results is one of the key parts in any data project. In this video, I'll show you how to create professional data visualizations within Python and turn that code into functions to automate the process. Over the years, I've made countless visualizations for data projects. And at first, this took me a very long time. I would spend way too much time trying to figure out how to change the small part of the graph to make it just perfect. And I was getting annoyed by this. So over the years, I've developed a data visualization workflow to streamline this process, which I will share in this video. I use this exact workflow to create professional looking figures for my clients that can be used in reports. So when it comes to data visualization, this is the workflow I follow. We start with number one, define an objective. What do we want to visualize and why? Then we collect the raw data. Then we process the data, potentially apply some kind of business logic. We create the figures, then we style the figures, we export them, we evaluate them, and then we basically continue in this loop because after evaluating, we might discover that we have to process some more data or process it differently, or you wanna change the styling and we basically iterate within this loop until we are satisfied with the end result. Let's now hop into a hypothetical case study where we can apply this workflow and do it step-by-step step and visualize the results within Python. Okay, so I found this data set on Kaggle. It's a sensor data from a pump and we'll be using this data set to apply the workflow. To. Here is a quick snapshot of the data. So we have a timestamp and then we have sensor 0 all the way to sensor 51 and we also have a machine status. Okay, so as you can see from the data, we can't really tell what each uh, sensor refers to. Someone in the discussion tried to make sense of all the sensors. Luckily for this hypothetical case study, it doesn't really matter if we're that precise. So we'll just use these as the column names. Okay, so I've downloaded the data and created a subset. This project will be on GitHub so you can follow along. For this project, I have to find the following objectives. We have to create two figures for a report to evaluate the pump performance. And the first figure should be the motor power, which uh, consists of four separate parameters. And we want to visualize them in one graph. And then the second figure that we have to create is the motor speed versus the pump temperature in Celsius. And now the temperature should be on a secondary Y axis. This data set originated from uh, the US. So we have a problem here where the temperature is locked within Fahrenheit and we have to convert this to uh, degree Celsius to correct the unit and then visualize it. So coming back to our, our workflow, we now have an objective. Now, luckily we already have the raw data because it was available on Kaggle. Okay, step three, process the data. This is where we can actually get to work. So let's hop into VS Code. Now I will go over this code very quickly because there's a lot to cover and I just wanna show you the whole process for you so you can understand it, see what you like, and then take individual parts from it and apply it to your own workflow. If there's anything that you don't understand, feel free to uh, leave a comment and I'll be happy to answer you. Okay, so let's start off by reading the data into a Pandas data frame. Read CSV. Now we load the data, parse date on the first column, index by zero. We'll also immediately set it as an index. Then we can continue to the next step, processing the data. Now having looked at the columns, I know that we don't need all the data. So there are a lot of sensors that we don't need. We'll create a subset of the data. So now our subset contains a timestamp and then sen sensor zero to sensor nine and sensor 49. Then what we will do is we will rename the columns. If we run this, run subset at columns again, we can see that everything is changed. Now all that's left to do is export this data and then run this and we'll use this file in the next script to continue. Okay, now we jump into the next file. So first we were in 001 process data within the data folder and now we go into features, read the pickle file and here you can see why using pickle files is so convenient because when I load this data set, it will be exactly the way we exported it. Now to save you some time, I already figure out, figured out how to convert Fahrenheit to degrees Celsius. Turns out how to do that is you take the degrees Fahrenheit, you subtract 32 and then you divide it by 1.8. Um, so what I've done is I basically created a function and if we now run it over here, we can see that it's now converted to Celsius where we range from 19 uh, to 16 over here. Now we save it and now if you run it again, we can see that we've created an additional column, but now in Celsius. So we'll do another two pickle export, run it, 
and we will use this as input for our figures. All right, so going back to our workflow, we've now processed the data and we have applied some business logic, the conversion, and now it's time to create figures. So let's first start with the first objective. And that was, we have to create a figure of the motor power and then uh, the four separate parameters that say something about the motor power. Now, if we go back over here and show the data, we can see that we have motor active power, motor apparent power, motor reactive power, and motor shaft power. So it will be these four columns that we're interested in. Okay, so then we're going to create the figures and we'll start off with an empty canvas. So let's see what this looks like. All right, we have an empty figure. What we can do is we call x1.plot and then we uh, input our index, then our column of interest, and then we also give it a label, which in this case is the same. So let's check what it looks like. And if we run the two together, we can see that we now plot one of the columns on this graph. To speed this process up, I've already created some of the other lines. So we can do it like this and we have all the power over here. So we have the active apparent reactive shaft four times. And now if you run this all at once, and as you can see, we have created a figure with all four power parameters into one figure. So that was basically the objective of the first figure, but it still is quite an ugly figure. It doesn't say that much. Uh, for example, there are no uh, labels, no legend, there are no units. So there is still uh, some work to do here, but then that's why if we go back to uh, our workflow, we have now uh, created a figure, but now we have to do some styling. All right, so now I'm gonna introduce you to my secret sauce. I've already showed this once in another video, but that is, that is basically uh, this file over here, which contains uh, some matplotlib plot settings. These are RC params that you can set, basically all the figures in that file that you create after setting these RC params, we'll use the following style settings over here. So I use this to basically always get the same template for my figures, which is very nice. And this is the template I use, but uh, of course you're free to, to, to change this up and to uh, change it to your specific needs. So if we go to the uh, Matplotlib documentation, you can see there's a very long list of RC parameters that you can use, uh, but I'll now show you what this looks like. So I have these settings in a separate file. And then over here, what I do is I um, Im basically import this file over here. So I uh, import the system and then I append the parent folder to the path uh, since we're in the visualization folder. Then we go uh, up to the source and then we can import from utility the plot settings. So basically what we do by running this, we now have imported the settings over here. And now if I run this again, we all of a sudden have a plot that looks much different. We're not there yet, but this is a great starting point. This is a format that's very convenient for reports because a report is usually an A4 format and you don't want a little square or almost square graphs, especially when you're dealing with time series data. So I think it's uh, much better to stretch it a little like this. And you can also see that we've changed uh, some of the styling where we have introduced a grid uh, there's some more spacing on the x-axis. That's also just because we made it uh, wider, but most of that comes from the ggplot uh, style that we're using for matplotlib. Now there are several, so you can uh, check them out. I like this one and the settings over here. Okay, so we've made some nice adjustments, but we're not there yet. The second thing that we're gonna change is uh, are the dates on the x-axis. So for this, we're gonna use the, the matplotlib dates uh, function and we basically set this to uh, the day locator and we set the interval to one day and then we can also format this so basically what this does if you look at the dates right now and if i run this again you can see that we've nicely split it split it up by day so this is the first second third fourth now of course uh, this could vary depending on uh, what you want in your graph also, depending on how many days you want to stretch, if you look at one day, you uh, might want to include hours, minutes, etc. But for this graph, I think it's nice to just uh, go by day. So as you can see, this line over here is touching the bottom of the, of the graph and we want to give it a little more space. So we define uh, a minimum and a maximum value. So let's just first do that. And then what we're going to do is uh, for the Y limit, we set the min and the maximum value. And then what we're also going to do, so wait, let me first show you what this is. 
So now we can see that we're ranging from 12 till 17. And what we can also specify is how many steps we want here. So we can use the np.arrange and let me show you what, what this does. We can basically tell what y ticks we want to use here. So this will result in 12 to 17 and that's why we use the minimum and maximum value and we do uh, plus one because it's not inclusive. And this is the step size. So we could also do it like this. So make the step size a half and then you can see we have some more steps over here, but for now I think it's fine to just go with one. So let's just check this out. Okay, so we've now adjusted the Y axis, converted the dates and also uh, give the graph a little more space underneath and uh, to the top. Now the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna set the labels and with that we're also going to set the legend. I'm just copying and pasting this stuff over here but then I will briefly explain it. So what we can do is we can set a title and then for the X and the Y we can set uh, a label and then also give it a color. And then we also can specify where we want the legend. Um, so let me show you what that looks like. So we can now see that on the Y over here, we have the power in Watts. And then here we, uh, we can see that it's a timestamp. And we also have the legend over here that uh, corresponds to each color. And now we can tell uh, all the lines apart. Now, of course, this is all personal preferences and you can tweak this to whatever you want. We have created them and we've also styled the figures to our liking. And now it's time to export. And I've also created a very awesome function to export figures, which I will paste over here. Basically what this function does, it only requires a file name and then it will create a folder within, uh, where are we, reports, figures, and then we'll, it will create a folder uh, for today's date and then it will put the file over there so you can look into it. It's pretty awesome. So how we can use this is we can go over here and then we say export figure, which is the name of the function. And then we just import the file name. And now if I clear this and then run all of this together, we can see that it says successfully exported motor power figure. And here we get a preview of, uh, of the image. And then if we go over here, reports figures, I can even open this in the finder. So let's reveal it, make this a little bit bigger. And now here we can see our image, which is quite awesome. So this basically ensures that we can create a nice plot and then also export it. Now, all that's left to do is this pack this up uh, nicely into a function that we can call to automate this process. Now, in order to do that, I'm going to add one more command. So we'll do a plt.show here. And then basically what we can do is we can go all the way to the top, define a function that says plot motor power. And then this takes as input our data frame. We take everything underneath and give it an indent to make sure it's uh, within the function. And now if we run this, oh, I see that I've made a mistake here, motot, motor power. Now with one press, we can create a nice figure and we can also export it. How awesome is that? Okay, so now coming back to the workflow, we're almost coming full circle where we can evaluate our plots. So we just had a look at them and maybe you want to change some things and then you, you continue again. But for now, I'm happy with how uh, this graph turns out. So, um, but this was not the only objective. We had another one. So coming back to a uh, file over here. So now we have this figure. Now we need the second figure. So let's continue with that. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna instantly paste the function to create the second figure because it's quite the same. It follows the same principles, but there's one major change. We basically do the same thing. So we start with an empty canvas, but now uh, we also create a secondary axis and we do this with this command. So we take x, uh, x1 and then we call this function twin x. It basically mirrors it. And then we have another uh, x uh, axis object that we can plot to the motor active power. It's still the same, but for the temperature, we now call X2. It's basically the same. So it's index, it's then the column, then we give it a label. But now I've added some additional styling over here. So I'll also, also define the color, the line style and uh, the opacity of that color. So this would be black at 25% turning it into basically gray. But you can add uh, many other parameters to the plot statements over here to tweak it even further. If I now run this plot and then it's speed versus temperature. And then we also throw in the data frame 
and then boom, we have another nice and fancy figure that we can use. And uh, so the main difference over here is, uh, and let me check, we've also exported this one. So if I reveal this in the finder, now we have it nice and big. What we can see is, so on the uh, left over here, we have the power in what? And then on the right over here, we have the temperature. Now, if you wanna take things one step further, what you can do is you can create another file, for example, visualize.py, and in there define a class, and then put the functions in here. So this is what I've done. So we have a class plot data, and then we here uh, we have the uh, export figure, we have the motor power, and we have the speed versus temperature. Basically the same as we've just saw, but we what we can now do if uh, I open this file over here, plot figures, let me run this. See how awesome this is. Now with three lines of code, we can create these figures. So how this works is first we create an instance of this class plot data. This is what we do over here. So this is an instance of the class. And then from that object, we can call motor power, which refers to this function over here. And this takes the data frame uh, as, an, as a parameter. And now if you run this line of code, we get the same figure and we also create an export. Now this is just awesome in my opinion. We've basically boiled down all the work, all the code that we did into a single line of code that we can now run to create a figure. And that's just awesome. So same for the speed versus temperature. Boom, there it is, nice graph. And it's also exported to the reports, figures, and it even has a folder for the date. Now, what the nice thing about this is, is that most of the time when you're working in an organization, you don't want just one graph. It basically repeats itself every month, every year, every quarter, stuff like that. And you can basically use this workflow to set up uh, data visualization pipelines to streamline this process. And now all you have to do, for example, if the next month comes around and your boss asks you to create new fig figures for another report or another evaluation, all you have to do is update the data set with the new data and then run this again. So it's basically a whole pipeline and then all you have to do is run this and you have new figures and they will be nicely over here within the figures folder within a new folder containing the new date so everything is nice and organized that concludes my data visualization workflow this is what i use to create visualizations for my clients uh, and what i used almost on a weekly basis and of course you can adjust the individual steps within this workflow to fit your needs so for example you can of course change colors change fonts change sizes uh, the principles will be the same well and that concludes this video i hope that you liked it i hope that you learned something and if that is the case, then I would really appreciate it if you like this video and subscribe to the channel. I'll be making more videos related to Python, data science and machine learning, basically anything to help you become better at working with data. So if that's what you're interested in, you should definitely subscribe and then I'll see you in the next one.